Okay, so welcome to video four in our series here on the glory of God in quantum physics. In this video, we're going to continue our examination of light. So, we're going to talk about the universe runs on light. I ended the last video by mentioning that light carries and transfers information. In this video, I want to give a few examples of how this process works. God created the universe in such a way to be able to reveal His glorious light. The substance of creation was designed to interact with and manifest the light of God. Light is actually a part of the Creator and exhibits supernatural characteristics such as omnipresence, intelligence, and eternality. Light also carries a force and can exert energy on other objects. God created the universe to run on His glory like a car runs on gasoline. The operating system of the universe runs on glory. Just like electricity makes an appliance work, the light of God makes our universe work. The fuel of the universe is glory, and this fuel is manufactured at the subatomic level. If the universe needs to manifest something or perform some operation, it has to get the energy from the glory of God to do so. Light is the blood, so to speak, of the universe. Almost every process that takes place in the universe, from fusion in the core of stars, to cells in the human body, to thoughts in the brain, light is the agent that makes something happen. Okay, so now we're going to go through some examples of how light really does control the universe. For example, we hear because of light. God created the earth with such an atmosphere that allows humans and other living things to use their sense of hearing to make sense of their world. There are countless atoms and gas molecules in the air. We are immersed in an ocean of nitrogen, oxygen, argon, carbon, dioxide, neon, helium, methane, krypton, hydrogen, and xenon. When something vibrates, say the vocal cords in our throat, it moves these molecules in a wave. These sound waves, which are moving air molecules, hit an eardrum, causing it to move. In a very mechanical way, the eardrum then moves the smallest bones in the human body, which in turn cause a chemical reaction to take place in the inner ear. When the tiny fibers in the cochlea move, they emit photons of light that travel to the brain. The brain will then somehow process the information contained in the light and translate that information into sound. How the human understands the information in the light as sound is truly miraculous. Light is also responsible for our sense of vision. You are able to look at this video only because the trillions of atoms that form the substance of your computer or the screen you're looking at are releasing countless photons. Light, either from the light bulbs in your ceiling or from the sun, is hitting the atoms that form the substance of your screen. As previously discussed, when the electrons in these atoms absorb the light energy, they move to higher energy levels and then release photons of light when they make their way back into their ground state. The photons of light enter the lens of your eyes, which focuses the light on the retina in the back of the eyeball. The retina is made of millions of cells called rods and cones that are sensitive to light and are responsible for allowing us to see in color. The rods and cones themselves are made of atoms. And when the light that comes through your eyes hits the atoms in the retina cells, the atoms download the information in the light and then emit another photon from the orbiting electrons. The rods and cones amazingly translate the information, such as color, shapes of objects, etc. They translate this information from the photons and convert it into electrical signals that travel along the optic nerve to the brain where the information is processed. Our brain is able to read the code in the light and then translate that information to our consciousness allowing us to see. This is also a truly miraculous process that we take for granted. Not only do we see and hear because of light, we also taste and smell because of light. 
The saliva in our mouth breaks down the chemicals from the food we eat before they enter a taste bud through the taste pore. The receptor cells in the taste buds welcome the chemicals, and depending on the chemicals in the food, the cells will recognize different flavors. The receptor cells will then send an electrical signal to the brain where it processes the information in the light to tell us what we taste. Are you seeing a pattern here? The chemicals in the food also interact with receptor cells in the upper regions of the nasal cavity. The receptor cells send the information about the chemical in a photon of light through the nervous system. The brain processes the information and tells us what we smell. So we hear because of light, we see because of light, we taste and smell because of light. Well, guess what? We are also alive because of light. Have you ever really thought about what life really is? I mean, like, what makes us alive? How are we alive? Well, everything is made out of the same stuff, yet only some things are alive. I know there are some New Agers out there who will tell you that everything in the universe has the life force in it. And to some degree, I agree with this because I believe the glory of God is at the heart of energy and matter. This will be discussed in a subsequent video. But there is a difference between a living being with consciousness and an inanimate object. The difference is information. A book is made of atoms and electrons and quarks and so on, but it has no life in it. A fish is also made out of the same ingredients at the atomic level, but it is alive. What makes this distinction? Besides the molecular structure, it is the information in the matter that makes the difference. Our cells were created by Almighty God to reproduce themselves forever. When sin entered the world, the power supply of God's Spirit that was originally intended to energize our cells was cut off and physical death ensued. Adam's spirit stopped receiving the right code from God's glory and he died. Consequently, there was no way for Adam and Eve to produce offspring with perfect coding. Hence, all of Adam's offspring inherit a sin nature and die. When we die, our human spirit, which contains the information of life from the realm of glory, leaves our body and this vacancy creates an information vacuum. Without the spirit, the physical body dies and decays. See James 2.26 No talk about life would be complete without a discussion of cells. And if there was ever anything that was a miraculous invention of God, it is the cell. Cells are miraculous machines that run on information from the spiritual realm. The nucleus of the cell contains the DNA molecules that store the information the cell runs on. The DNA contains the software, so to speak. Who do you suppose wrote the code? No computer programmer on the planet would say a computer program wrote itself. Even after billions of years, there is no way a program could just write itself. There has to be an intelligent mind behind the information, because information does not just originate in a void. This is why Darwinian evolution just isn't good science. It fails to explain where the information came from that made all of the different species. It is the origin of the information that is important, because without the information, there could be no living organism to even talk about. How does a DNA molecule, which is really just a bunch of atoms, contain information? Where do the atoms store this information, and how do they communicate it? As mentioned previously, I propose the idea that light is the source of the information. God downloads light with information, and the light can communicate that information to any atom in the DNA strand. The DNA strands in each cell vibrate at a certain frequency. The strands coil and flex several billion times per second, and every time this happens, a photon of light is released. These pulses of light communicate and control every function of the cell. As a matter of fact, every second, 100,000 chemical reactions take place in one cell, and these reactions are regulated by a single photon traveling at the speed of light. The process by which cells make proteins is truly miraculous. 
There are one billion microscopic machines making one cell work. The machines are proteins, which are chains of complex chemicals. These chemicals can process information in the light emitted from the DNA. From this information, the proteins build machines that literally build the structures of the cells. The proteins are guided by information, which I propose comes from the light of God's glory. The cell seems to be driven by some intelligence that tells it what to do. The intelligence is in the DNA strand, as it contains the digital code that controls every function of the cell. But how does the information downloaded into the DNA communicate to other parts of the cell? It's not enough to just have information. Without some way of deciphering the code, the information is useless. Fortunately, there is a mechanism inside the cell for reading and processing the information, and it's called a RNA polymerase. The RNA polymerase travels down the DNA strand like a zipper and unwinds the strand so it can be copied. You can watch animations of this process on YouTube.com, and it's fascinating to watch. As the RNA polymerase gets the information out of the DNA, it makes a duplicate copy. The copy, known as a messenger RNA, is nothing more than molecules, yet it contains information. These molecules then go on to the ribosome, which is actually like a machine that builds amino acids, which are the building blocks of life. The ribosome translates the information in the messenger RNA and somehow takes this information and links amino acids in just the right way to create a protein. When the protein leaves the ribosome factory, it is then accompanied by other molecules that keep it safe as it makes its way to another machine that makes the link of atoms fold in just the right way. Once the protein is complete, it is released into the cytoplasm to perform a specific operation. Different proteins do different things. Some proteins help cells divide, while some proteins help a cell take shape. One protein, called a motor protein, moves mechanically, like a machine, as it carries fuel to parts of the cell that need energy. Some proteins, called enzymes, are like pieces of a puzzle that have slots to connect to certain molecules to initiate chemical reactions. The energy source the enzyme lives off of is adenosine triphosphate, or ATP. It takes energy for cells to perform basic functions. If something needs to move inside the cell, it has to get the energy from somewhere to move. Remember, according to Newton's first law of motion, things remain at rest until some force acts upon it to make it move. In the case of cells, and the tiny parts that keep the cells alive, energy is required to mechanically control the cell's various functions. The process by which our cells receive and use energy is quite remarkable. Because we can't get energy from the sun like plants, we have to get energy from the food we eat. But we can't get the energy out of the food unless our cells have oxygen. This is where our lungs come in. The lungs inhale oxygen-rich air and transfer the oxygen to the bloodstream in the air sacs. The bloodstream then carries the much-needed oxygen to all of the cells in our body. In a miraculous process called cellular respiration, cells take oxygen and glucose in the blood and turn those molecules into light energy. If the body needs energy, it has to pay for it by allowing ATP chemical bonds to break apart. When the ATP loses one of its phosphate molecules, it finds mitochondria to get that phosphate put back on the chain so the process can continue again. But in order to get this phosphate added again, it takes a lot of energy, and this energy comes from the food we eat. How does the cell get the energy out of the food, though? Mitochondria take in food molecules with high energy chemical bonds, such as glucose, which is sugar, amino acids, and fatty acids. When the molecules from the food enter the mitochondria, the molecules are broken down, and the electrons that are shared get released forming light energy. This light hits enzyme pumps on the membrane. 
the electrons go through the enzyme and the negatively charged electron will attach to an oxygen atom. The food molecules on the other side of the membrane lost their electrons and so the carbon atoms that are left over combine with oxygen to form CO2 and then are carried by the blood to the lungs for exhalation. Before we move on, I want to give you some food for thought. Take a moment and consider how matter, which is a lifeless entity, could develop the digital code and the hardware to contain it on its own. Let's assume for argument's sake that God does not exist. This presents a problem because if there is no God, then matter just decided one day to have intelligence and start communicating information. All the atoms that formed the DNA molecule chain just magically wrote a sophisticated code that was the key information that made things come to life. It also means that matter became aware on its own and wrote its own coherent language and then found out a way to communicate that language to a universe that knew how to read it and understand it. If you are an atheist, then you have no choice but to come to those conclusions because either God was the mastermind behind the universe or the created stuff of the universe just came to life on its own. The former seems more logical. Here is one last tasty morsel I'll leave with you to chew on. Every living thing has the same atoms making up their DNA. Chemically speaking, our human DNA is no different than that of a cat, an apple, or any other living organism. So it must be something invisible, something not of this world, that makes the distinctions between the different species. It is the intangible information that comes from the Word of God. God downloads this information into light, which is responsible for every process that takes place in the cell.